right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all are doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized and changing your ways. I hope that the Lord protects you and guides you in everything that you're going through. I hope that your mental health gets better. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord really protects you and comforts you. And you just gain more wisdom. You become more strong and wise in the Lord. Amen. I hope that you all had a blessed week and a blessed weekend, blessed Sabbath, blessed Passover. As Passover is still continuing. I'm just hoping that everybody is able to have a merry heart and have some joy. You know, it's a lot going on all four corners of the earth. But I just hope your your, your personal life you have more stability, you have more joy, you know, you're able to smile and laugh about a, a lot more things, you know, you know, there's a lot of things to complain about and bicker about, but there's also still things to have joy about and be grateful for and thank God for, amen, so he woke us up this morning, so we got to always appreciate that and enjoy the day as it is, you know, do not worry about tomorrow because we shall not boast about tomorrow because the day, today is already enough as it is, amen, so we got to take a day by day, moment by moment with the Lord. And we just got to keep worshiping him in truth and spirit. We just got to keep praying, calling on his name. We have to keep helping others around us along the way. We have to just really keep him first, you know. Let us let him guide our steps and our paths. And let us follow through and be obedient. Amen. Let us love the Lord our God with all our mind, heart, and soul, strength, and might. And serve him with diligence and joy. Let us love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Let us know the Lord better personally. And let us spread the gospel, spread sound doctrine, obey the law, statute, commandments, and pass it on to others as well. And let us be not just readers and hearers of the word, but also let us be doers of the word. Amen. All right. So today's message, I'm going to do a church note from Jen DeLeon. All right. And the title of the church note is called Becoming a Better Single. All right. So this message is more based around relationships and love or companionships, things of that nature. Y'all know my messages are always based around like personal things with God and the Bible, uh, you know, things of that nature. But I don't really talk about love or relationships as much as I did. I probably done a few messages about it in my earlier episodes. I've talked about marriages and love, being with the right person, being equally yoked. Um, I've done a few messages and topics about love and relationships. So um, this is going to be one of those other ones. Um, you know, it's always important that our relationship with the Lord is the most important one, first and foremost, amen, and that we have to make sure our relationship with God is on point. You know what I mean? The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make sure we're intact with all those three, really in tune with those three, you know, because those three care about us a lot. You know, the Holy Spirit is the comforter, the helper. You know, the Son, he died for our sins. He's the way, truth, and life, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. And the Father's the maker of all everything, amen, of heaven and earth, so we have to really make sure we're on point with all three. We have to make sure that the Lord is really first in our life and we center everything around him and that he is always first in our lives. And we always make that a priority. And when it comes to matchmaking or love and meeting people, uh, you let the Lord have his way with that. I know there's a scripture saying that he who finds a good wife, find, finds a wife, finds a good thing, you know, and, obt and obtains favor from the Lord. And there's also the Proverbs 31 scripture that, you know, a lot of women love to quote as well. And then there's also certain scriptures in the Bible that talks about how an excellent wife is the crown of a husband, you know, and a bitter wife is the rottenness of a man's bones. You know what I mean? So it's important what type of women you deal with, what type of women you marry, the type of companion or spouse or girlfriend you have, you know what I mean? And vice versa for women, it's important to know what type of man you're dealing with, what type of, you know, guy you're getting involved with, you know what I mean? Because all in all... It'll always be lovely and beautiful where we let God be the matchmaker. The Lord knows what's best for us. He knows who's best for us. Amen. So we have to let the Lord guide us when it comes to love and relationships, what have you, uh, or companionship if it's his will. You know, for some people, it's God's will to be married. For others, it may be someone's, it may be someone's will to be single or what have you. You know, everybody's situation and life circumstances are different, all in all. But whatever your relationship status is, all in all, make sure God is always first in your life and that your relationship with the Lord is better than your relationship with anything or anybody. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because that's always important. You know, God always loves us. He sees all of us inside out. He sees all of our highs and lows. So you always want to make it right with the Lord, you know. And if you love the Lord, you keep the commandments. Amen. So all in all, if you're ever able, fortunate to find that right person, that's always a blessing. Because in these hard times, it's very challenging and hard, and hard to find love. It's very difficult. Um, because we're really in the last days, we're really in the end of times. This is the days of Noah. This is Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. This is really new Babylon, new age, man. So uh, human 
humanity's communication has been awful. The way we treat each other, the way we talk to each other, the way we interact, it's just awful from all angles. You know what I mean? I think the correlation and the connection between man and woman is at an all-time low. You know, all this sin, all this wickedness, all this bad intentions, all this trauma, all this pain, all this hurt, all this suffering, it's just too much division. You know what I mean? So that's why there's no love out here. But there's still some rare good people in this world. This is a big world. Um, You can still find love out there. You know what I mean? You know, and everybody, you know, it's not an entitlement thing, but, you know, people deserve to be embraced, loved, cherished. You know, too many people out there have been through too much pain or hurt, disappointment, um, traumatic things, you know, painful experiences. And what it does is sometimes it makes people uh, self-esteem get challenged. They worth feels uh, they feel devalued because of the, the bad people that's in their life. You know, some people have experienced abuse or domestic violence or <clears throat> you know, toxic partners or toxic exes, you know, all types of stuff, man. I just think it's crazy what uh, a man or woman could put each other through, you know what I mean? But all in all, you know, God did say, love your wife as Christ loved the church, amen? And God did say, the Bible does say to um, that wives should submit to their husbands, you know what I mean? So it's very important how we treat each other and keep things centered around God, you know, center your relationships, your marriage around around the Lord, you feel me? And um, it's beautiful to find a prayed up person. It's beautiful to find a person where y'all both have the same faith, y'all equally yoked, y'all on the same path, y'all got the same faith and all. I mean, that's just amazing to have, you know? So, you know, I'm going to go through it this church note based around relationships or what have you and just go from there because, um, you know, if, if it's God's will to give you a companionship, let it be, you know? Um, if God breaks someone in your life, Love that person, embrace that person, appreciate it, because good people are rare nowadays, you know. Most people we all run into tend to to have bad intentions or not good for us, but let the Lord have his way with that, you know. And remember, man, always appreciate people for who they are and what they bring to the table. You know, someone brings you ease and comfort and laughter and joy and goodness, thank God for that, you know, because a lot of people don't have that, you know what I mean? So... Whoever God brings into our life and blesses us with, let us be a blessed. Let, let let's be a blessed to them as well. Amen. Let it not be just a one way street in entitlement. Let it be mutual, and let it both benefit one another. Amen. But all around, let us center God first and foremost. Amen. So I'm gonna go with this church note. We're gonna close out with the priestly blessing and the prayer and the glory of the Most High. And from there, right. So here we go with the church note. All right, Jen De Leon, becoming a better single. If you're feeling down because you're single, this message will help you to embrace and appreciate the power of singleness. Also, you won't be single forever. Becoming a better single. There's no reason to feel down if you're single. In order to be a great mate, you must first be a great mate to yourself. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. If you're single, it's because you're whole. Sometimes we think if you're not with someone, it's a problem. But sometimes when you get with someone, that's when the problem starts. God created Adam and Eve as singles first. You're exactly how God created you to be. I don't want you to spend together. I don't want you to spend another minute feeling bad if you're single. If you're not a good single, you're not going to be good in a couple. We look at a relationship to the answer to answer to the answer to, to our problems, but there's no cure for singleness because it's not a disease. A great relationship are two great singles coming together. If we don't take the time to harness the power of being single and you find yourself in a relationship where that person becomes your source rather than God being your source. Being single means I'm not afraid to get to know myself. I'm not afraid to know what I like and don't like. I don't need someone to love me to know I'm lovable. If you don't love yourself, how are you going to get someone to love on you? The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. That doesn't mean loneliness. It means it's not good for a man to be without help or support. When we feel unsupported in a relationship, no matter how good the sex is, it's not about the sex, it's about the support. As you're evaluating if someone is right for you, Are they only interested in what you can do for them or where you're going? Are they interested in your calling? 
If you're not attracted to someone's calling, you're going to create conflict because the more time they spend in their calling, you're going to look at that as conflict in the time you want them to spend with you. One of the reasons you're in the shape you're in is because you're dating too many beasts and not patient enough to wait for the beauty. Stop dating beneath your calling. Stop dating beneath your power. Stop dating beneath your destiny. You got to date at the level at which you know God called you. And if you have to wait, you wait. Don't settle for less because it gets you in a mess. God wants to bring someone beautiful. And I don't mean the exterior. I mean the interior. There's nothing wrong with you. And if you start to believe there's something wrong with you, you're going to date people you weren't designed to date. I'm tired of seeing single people, especially in the church, selling for less than what God has for them. How do you know you're dating a beast? You got to become someone else to be with them. You're fearful of expressing how you feel because you're afraid they're going to reject you. Stop being afraid of rejection. When someone is rejecting you, they're not saying you're not good enough. They're saying you're just not the right fit for me. Rejection is not only God's protection. It's also God's redirection. He is redirecting you to the right person. Do not allow the pressure of moving into a relationship or marriage get you out of waiting until you know it's time. What God is trying to do in your life is going to take a little bit of time and the time works for your good, not against it. People are depressed in single time because they created a date time of when they wanted to have someone and the date has passed and they're still single. God is saying, why would you choose an arbitrary date by which to judge my goodness? Then you get depressed by what you don't think I'm going to do. I'm doing when you have no idea who I'm preparing for you. And that person isn't right for you yet. And you're not right for them yet. So I'm preparing you both at the same time and your destinies are going to collide. You have no idea what I'm doing on your behalf. Stop complaining and start thinking. It's important to stop trying to be everything to everybody. If somebody doesn't like you as you are, they're not your person. They're not your pair. If you don't like somebody as is, stop trying to change them for who you want them to be and accept them for who you are. And if you don't like that person, they're not their person. I'd rather you be at home Netflix and chilling by yourself than to share airspace with someone you were never designed to be with. See that than to be with someone who's not taking you to God, but is taking you from God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. He had taken out of the man and he had brought her and he brought her to the man. Adam was the one with the need and question. Eve was the answer. You've got to have a receiving spirit, not a looking spirit. A looking spirit becomes hungry and thirsty spirit, and it leaves you open to manipulation because you'll come across somebody who will take advantage of your looking and hunger. They use that for their gain and your loss. Let God bring you to the person he has for you. Opposites attract, but those are that alike stay together. Being attracted to someone who's opposite, and that's cool for a moment, when you try to do life, you want someone who has the same goals as you. Just because you find them in the church, it doesn't automatically mean they have the same goal as you. Watch your dating appetite. If you want healthy love and relationships, you need to start practicing health now. You're not right. You have anger problems. You haven't been in therapy. You have to pray some more. Be selective and get your appetite so you can receive the good pair God has for you. Too often in relationships, we hide who we are from the person we're with. Because we're afraid of our, our vulnerability will lead them away. The right person will not only be attracted to your pain, but also to your purpose. If you're with someone and you can't express how you feel, then that creates distance between the two hearts. Start asking more questions of the person you're with. If you're in a relationship and someone knows something you don't know about them, or someone knows how they feel about you, and you don't know how they feel about you, ask, how do you feel about me? What's your vision of life? Do you feel about me now how I feel about you? <clears throat> Are you dating anybody else? Am I the only one? Are we exclusive? Some of you don't want to scare them away, but you better turn on the lights and let the roaches run if they're the right person. They're going to stay. Assumptions get us hurt. You got to have enough vulnerability to ask some questions. And if they go, they were going to go anyway. Nobody that's really connected to you is going to be upset when you're trying to find the truth about what's going on. But someone who is not connected is going to be like, why are you asking all these questions? Do you not trust me? No, I don't. We're still building. 
It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to be vulnerable. That vulnerability will lead you to victory because as you get answers, you'll be able to say it's good or not good fit for me. One of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is the gift of self-discovery. Don't wait to find out who you are until you're in a relationship or marriage. There will be things revealed when you're in a relationship because relationship management is trauma management, and those things will come out. Get to know who you are, what you like, and don't be afraid to stand on that. Do not compromise to be recognized by nobody. If they don't see you as you are, then thank God they're blind to the beauty that is within you. You be the beautiful, powerful, loving person you are, and let God do the rest. Amen. Amen. We touch and agree. So that is a church note from Jen DeLeon, Becoming a Better Single. This is a beautiful church note. All her church notes are always amazing, but this one was like really deep. It hit the heart, uh, you know, because a lot of us deal with vulnerability or loneliness or isolation. And with this journey and this walk with God, when you believe in the Lord in an evil world like this, a lot of times that can cause some uh, that narrow path, that loneliness, that isolation, because it's hard to find someone who has the same beliefs as you or um, understands you inside out. You get what I'm saying? So all in all, God understands us and, you know, he cares for us heavy. You know what I'm saying? We can never measure how much he loves us. So, you know, that was a really beautiful church note. And if anybody's listening to this, I hope if you're a man and you're listening to this, I hope that the Lord can provide you with a good woman, a good companionship. And if you're a woman listening to this, I pray that the Lord can give you a good man and uh, could guide you or protect you as well. Amen. Because in these end times that we're in, it's very hard to meet solid, good people. You know, these times that we're in, <laughs> you know, you got to really get somebody you can survive these end times with, you know, get you somebody you can survive all this prophecy stuff with, you know, because uh, you definitely need someone strong and supportive, you know. You definitely can't be with somebody who can't endure things with you, amen? So, we're, in, we're you know, as a world, you know, overall, this world is in a real troubling phase right now, real weird transition evil-wise, darkness-wise. So for your behalf, for your sake, for your personal life, you definitely want somebody by your side who can get you through these end times, someone who's really comforting, nurturing, supportive, you know, because the vices of this world, how harsh it this world is, how sharp it is, you need somebody to soften you up and lighten you up because at times we could be so intense and hard on ourselves. You just, you're being, having someone good and supportive by your side that helps so much, you know, and all of us need that. I speak for myself, me, anybody listening, we we all need that. You know what I mean? So, yes, yes. All right. So that's a church note. All right. So there you have it. What I would love to do as I close out is give all the glory to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and praise his only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. All right. So here we go. Yes, he is the hope for humanity, the last hope of humanity. He is the last Adam, the second Adam. He is the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega. Amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessing only potent, the blessing only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone. The captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the wonderful counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the hair of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jehovah Jireh, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, the king of Israel, amen. He is the king of kings, hallelujah. He is the king of kings and lord of lords, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader, the commander, the life, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Be Yahweh, Ahai, Yesha, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim, Hosanna, Hosanna, the father of lights, the father of the fatherless, the father of the widows, the consuming fire, 
the sustainer, the sufficient one, the Lord of all, the provider, the Lord of glory, the name above all names, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God, a savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the, rev the revelation, the revelator, the resurrector, the radiant one, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the perfect example, the rule of God's creation, the rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the great physician, the carpenter. The Savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the government rests on his shoulders, the Shiloh, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Yes, he is the way. Amen. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of Yah, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, he is the word. Yes, yes, he is the word of life. Yes, he is the word. Amen. We touch and agree. We serve an awesome creator, and the son is amazing for die for our sins. Amen. In the authority and the power and name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, renewed, restored, redeemed, loved, forgiven, embraced, cherished. Yes, yes, you are blessed, you are anointed, you are favored, new creature in Christ, born again, repented, baptism, you are baptized, amen, you have new beginnings, a new mind, a new heart, a new soul, new eyes, new legs, new health, new hands, new prosperity, new beginnings, new paths, new footsteps, new open doors, new scenery, new places, amen, the Lord is moving you to a new place, the Lord is moving you, it's a new transportation, the Lord is helping you. And supplying in his son's riches. Amen. Yes, yes. We serve an awesome creator, amazing son. Amen. Yes, yes. So there you have it, y'all. All right. That is the church note for this week. All right. That is the church note, y'all. Yes, love, love, relationships. Have to stress the importance of love and relationships. Becoming a better single. Yes, yes. As a note right there. You know, this world is so evil and so hateful. It makes people forget how to be loved, how to give love. But we know Corinthians love. The Bible tells us about that. And, you know, how it doesn't boast, how it doesn't brag. You know, you know, love covers all sins. You know, the greatest love of all is a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. The Lord, he loved us so much. He gave his son for us. Amen. So love is important, man. All throughout the old covenant, the new covenant, it's all about love, y'all. All right. We got to really give and receive love and Really cherish and share it, man. You know, love is not meant to be kept to oneself. All right, so let us keep working to be better for ourselves. Let us be better for the Lord, you know what I mean? And let the Lord God protect us in, in our comings and goings, amen? So that you have a child, all right? So I pray to God that whoever is to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your, your life with for the most high. I pray that you change your ways and repent. And I just hope that you get on a better path that the Lord has set for you and all the things that the Lord has in store for you, that he gives you a hundredfold of it. Amen. Eternal life in a hundredfold. Yes, yes. Let us take risks for the Lord. Let us walk by faith and trust in him. All right. So what I love to do is give you all this priestly blessing and dip. So here we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I'm Jairus Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace. Shalom. Amen.